What's up traders? Today we're talking about the three best ways to set up alerts inside of Thinkorswim. And if you stick with me towards the end of the video, I'll share some tips and tricks for setting up advanced types of alerts. We are looking at the SPY, which is the ETF for the S&P 500, and we're looking at it on the daily time frame chart. The first and easiest way to create an alert would be to right click somewhere on your chart window, navigate through the drop down to where it says create alert. And when you click on that, you should be presented with a pop up window. Now in here, we're going to spend some time and get really familiar with all the settings up above as well as some of the ones hiding down below in the drop downs but I do promise once we understand this in more detail the method number two and method number three will move at a much faster pace so first and foremost the symbol should auto populate to whatever chart it was that you right clicked on which is why I mentioned we're looking at the spy chart the spread should default to a stock pricing if you're looking at a stock chart if you're looking at an option spread chart then it will default to the single and then from there you can choose whatever spread you're interested in We'll cover that as we get to the advanced section of the video later. Next up, we have the type of price that is going to trigger your alert. And by default, it is set to the mark price, which is almost the equivalent of the last. But if you want to drop this down and choose something else, you can. We have the last, we have the bid, the ask, there's that mark again. And then down towards the bottom, we also have the close. I skipped over a number of options right here because I don't personally use these, so I'm not an expert in them. They have a lot to do with volatility. So use those and explore those if you're interested and they suit your strategy, but they're not for me, so I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert in them. And then down towards the bottom, we have this study filter, which we're gonna dive into in much more detail in the third method for creating alerts here in today's video. The next thing we have is the condition dropdown. So if we drop this down, what you'll notice is we really have two subcategories. We have these at or wording, so you can see at or below, at or above, and then we just simply have below and above. Let's quickly walk through an example of how this actually works. Let's just say that this horizontal line is going to represent the price here, 470.90, and we're currently trading above it up around here. Let's say we, that we choose the at or below wording here. If we were to come down and tag that level, so the last traded price here, or the mark rather, because that's what we have it set to, is 470.90 and we used at or below, the alert would trigger because we are at 470.90. However, if you were to just choose below, the alert would not trigger because we are not technically below that number in the box. What would be required would be for price to move through it and trade 470.89, and then the alert, if you had chosen below, would actually go off. The same is true but opposite, obviously, for at or above, and of course, above. The window here where we, our price level is actually located, is that a random number in there? No, absolutely not. Nothing is ever random in the platform here. And I would just point your attention to where we right-clicked, right? It's very convenient that Thinkorswim actually froze our crosshairs in the background. It's at 470.90, and that's the exact number that we have in the box. Now, you can adjust this, of course, manually. However, if you were trying to set an alert at the all-time high, I would just recommend that you right-click closer to the all-time high. You could also come in and double click and type in whatever number you want. So let's go 465, enter. And what you'll notice is our little preview window has been updating based on all of the changes that we've been making in this condition line. So just to illustrate this as well, let's say I put this to last, Notice how that this is now representing last. If we change from at or above to just simply above, notice how the equal sign has now been omitted and we just have a greater than sign, meaning that we need to trade through, as we mentioned, that 465. So that's the preview window in a nutshell as well. The next thing we'll talk about is this little lock icon, which is fairly interesting here. It's not something that I would recommend you use on a regular basis, but we're gonna cover it in case you ever find yourself in this situation. So what I want you to pay attention to before I click it is this box right here, our alert price, as well as the last traded price of the S&P 500, which is in this little bubble right here. The market is, of course, open, so the price is moving around. Now, notice what happens as I click the lock, right? Boom. Those two things are now reflecting the last traded price of the SPY. So our alert is essentially tracking the last price. And if I were to just click create, that wouldn't really be too useful because of volatility. It would be very likely that that alert would trigger nearly instantaneously. So what Thinkorswim has done is offered us the ability to offset the alert by either a percentage amount. You could click on this and change it to a fixed dollar figure, or you could click it one more time. And this little step icon refers to tick increments. Tick increments on stocks are generally one penny. So if I were to make this, I don't know, let's just say, for example, sake six, that would mean that we're looking for six cents above what the current last traded price 
price is. And you can certainly see that in the number down below in our preview window. I know the numbers are moving around. It might be hard to see, but this is six cents greater than whatever number it has been the last traded price. Just for example's sake, we'll do the same thing with percentage. So let's just go with 10% offset here. You'll notice our alert preview has jumped higher and 483 is roughly 10% greater than 439. So that's how that works. And again, I think you get much more control if you leave it locked and manually input whatever number you want. So we'll go back to 465 and uh, we'll just put this back to the mark here and we'll use at or above. So that's all good. The next and final option that we have in this upper pane is the best. And if you were to click on this, no matter how hard you click, it's not gonna drop down. And that's because we have the stock spread pricing here and you're not able to choose the, the, uh, the exchange you want the pricing from. If you were looking at options and had some sort of spread loaded up, then you could drop this down and you could choose whatever exchange you wanted your options spread pricing to come from. We'll talk about that again as we move throughout the video today. We talked about the preview window, so let's close that up and get into the notifications. Now, of course, it's gonna play a sound when the alert actually goes off. By default, it's the bell, so I'm gonna stop talking and preview that. Maybe you could hear that in the background, maybe not. Again, you can just upload a custom sound if you want something different. That's not really the powerful part of Thinkorswim. What is, is the ability to send alerts to your mobile phone. Now, if you have a passive swing trading type strategy, this is definitely something you wanna take advantage of. And you can set up your mobile phone in the either uh, TD Ameritrade website or through the platform in this little setup icon. I believe there's a notification sub tab in there. You can play around and find the right settings and that's how you would set up your phone. And what's gonna happen is that when the alert is triggered, you're gonna get a text message essentially or a thinkorswim alert that uh, you know it's gonna say everything for the condition box here. So the price, the mark price of SPY is at or above 465 is what the text would read. Now from there, you can add some additional things, different things that have to do with price readings here, some volatility readings. And then something I find fairly interesting is this miscellaneous category. You can check off study value and whatever studies you have on your chart. So for us, we have the blue line 50 SMA and the green line 200 SMA those values would be included in the text message to your phone, which again is just a nice extra bit of information that you can set up. So that's really the powerful part of this drop down here. The next one is our options for submitting and expiration. So by default, it will be set to now. This will be instantaneous. As soon as you click create, it'll go out there in the world. If you wanted to delay it, you certainly could by using at a specified time. You can pop open the calendar. Let's say we wanna use next Monday. There we go. It'll be submitted on Monday at 3.16 and 57 seconds, right? You can change that as well, of course. The same thing with the expiration. I'm just gonna pop that back to now. It's usually not specified, which means that this alert will exist forever until the conditions that we set up here are either satisfied or we manually cancel the alert itself. I'll show you canceling alerts in just a second here. And then if we go back down, same thing, you can expire it at a specific time. If you were to go somewhere really far out in the future, so let's choose like 2025, let's say you forget about this specific alert, you can get a reminder before it expires by clicking this option here. And I believe you get seven days. Yep, there we go. So seven days before it expires, you just get a reminder that says, hey, are you sure you want this to expire? Yes or no? And you can go from there. Again, not really something that I use, but it is an option here. The same is true in terms of things that are uh, options, but something that I don't really use for this reverse crossover. Usually if I'm setting an alert, I really only care about these conditions up here being met, not the reverse. So usually once this happens, I'm more attentive to the price of the chart, looking at setup, seeing if there's something I wanna do. But if for your specific strategy, you wanna be alerted on the reverse crossover of the condition above, you can do that by choosing the last option here, create regular alert. I'm not really sure why they have an option to create a silent alert. You would never get a notification for it, which doesn't really seem too useful, but that is an option here. Uh, so that's gonna cover everything in our pop-up window here. Let's just open the preview tab. Make sure that everything's good. We are looking at the SPY. That's good. We want stock pricing. We want the mark and we want it at or above 465. We're currently trading below that. So it's not going to go off instantaneously and let's click create, right? So here we go. Boom. There we go. We get our orange information tag at the end, the orange line showing us where the alert will be triggered. So if we were to come up and trade at or above that level, boom, it would go off. Now you have the ability to click on this tag and drag it around. So let's move it a little bit lower off the screen. I am just getting a confirmation window. I'll click replace. And now that alert has been replaced. A quick note about this, you can't actually change the type of price that you're reading or the condition. You can only really drag and change the price level where the alert will go off. Here's something interesting as well. Let's say that I were to drag this below where the current price is trading. Now, before I go ahead and click on the confirmation box here, I want you to look in this top left-hand corner and I'm gonna go ahead and click in three, two, one. 
Notice how the alert went off instantaneously because obviously the SPY price is at or above that level that we just you know set there. And I'm also looking on my desk and I'm getting a phone notification that SPY mark is at or above that four, what did we set? 436.22 it was. So, you know, I'm just illustrating that this is gonna, you know, truly work out for you and you will get a notification to your phone. I'll put the pop-up or a, a, um, a screenshot rather of that on the screen now. So that's essentially it. We've created the first and easiest way to go through alert here, I'm just going to show you canceling now. So if I'm just going to come in here and create a quick alert there at or above is fine. And we're just going to create another one. Watch this. You can also use a watch list. I'm looking at the SPY. I'm clicking in the last column. That's important for a reason here. I'm going to click on create alert and notice a couple of things. The same exact pop-up is here. However, the price level is going to default to last because that's the column that I used to right click on. And because we didn't have a price access to click on, we also are using the unlocked method here. So I'm just going to lock that quickly and make sure that this price is certainly above. We'll go 470 for that one and we'll click create. Oops, that's way higher. I, I missed a decimal point there, but you get the gist. So there's two ways you can cancel an alert. The first one would be pretty self-explanatory. Just click on the X because it's way off screen. I'm going to do that, and that alert is now canceled. If you forget about an alert, and you don't, maybe you don't remember the ticker that it's set on, here's what you do. You come to the Market Watch tab, and when you click on that, you come into the Alerts sub tab, and here we go. The active alert on our S&P chart is this one right here. It says it's active. Here it is. Mark is at or above 471.15. If I quickly come over over to the chart tab, there you go. Mark is at or above 471.15. So that is the alert. There's two ways to cancel it. I can right click and I can click cancel alert, or I could come over here to the actions uh, column and click on the cancel button. When I do that, it's canceled. If we come on over to the chart window, you can see it's no longer on our screen. So that's the first method in a nutshell. Let's move on to the second. So the next way is to use a drawing set. And if you're not familiar with the drawing tools in Thinkorswim, definitely watch this video in the top right hand corner where I do a detailed explanation of all of the tools that are available to you. We're gonna really focus on three for the sake of today's video. If I pop open the tools tab, we're gonna use the horizontal level, the trend line tool, as well as the Fibonacci retracement tool to illustrate a couple of different things. Firstly, let's start off with the horizontal level. I'm just gonna map out a rough area of resistance. And then what I'm going to do to create an alert would be to right click on the level. I'm going to not go all the way to the bottom, so not here, but instead use create alert with drawing. And when I do that, the menu is now much simpler. You'll notice that we don't have nearly as many things to think about here because the price level is all going to be dictated by the level from the drawing. So if the intrabar price crosses above because we're looking for a break from the bottom side up, we want an alert here. You can of course add a note. The preview window is the exact same as what we saw in the other method. And then we also have the notifications tab, same thing. And the same thing with your expiration. The alert this time cannot be delayed for a point in the future. So that's what we have in the box here. Again, very self-explanatory, almost the same exact thing. I'm going to click create. And then there's a couple of nuances that I want to point out here. The first thing is that if I activate our drawing, so I'm going to go ahead and activate the drawing now, notice that if I move this drawing, the alert does not come with it. Even if I click off to solidify that new placement here, the alert will stay where it was originally set. You can also not click on this and drag it like we could with our other alerts from the right click method. So that's noteworthy here. You can of course cancel this as you would any other alert and you can remove the drawing after that. Let's do the same exact thing and illustrate some other concepts with the trend line tool. So coming in from the high, swinging it out and boom, there's your first contact point, anchor, touch one here. Let's right click on this drawing. We're gonna use the same menu option, create alert with drawing. And then again, you can just choose crosses, crosses above, whatever suits your fancy for how the drawing is set up. You can choose that crossing option here. Same exact options below. We're not gonna belabor the point. I'll click create. And what I want to point out here is a couple of things. This will go on forever. The trajectory of the alert is forever. It's not limited to the terminus of your resistance trend line or support trend line if it's going the other way around, correct? And then just like the other drawing that we had, if I were to adjust this, I can move it all the way over here and reactivate it didn't move the alert, correct? Or you can even adjust the trajectory, do something like this, and that's also gonna have no impact on the alert that was created. So do keep that in mind if you're adjusting drawings on the fly. Once again, I'll show you the other method for uh, canceling the alert, which would be here in the market watch tab. If I click on that, 
and you can see that we have this drawing source for the SPY daily. If the intrabar price crosses, it was to the upside, there's that active alert. I'm just gonna click on the little cancel, and now that should no longer be valid over on our chart. So that's the trend line example, and then the last one we'll do quickly, oops, grabbing the other tool here, is the Fibonacci retracements. I'm gonna come in from this local high down to the low, and what I wanted to illustrate here is that you can use the different curves. So I'm gonna go create alert with drawing. We'll do at or above and we'll click create. And now you'll notice that the alert is set to the 61.8 curve because that's where I right clicked. If we click on the 38.2, we can do the same thing. Create alert with drawing. We'll go with crosses above and create. And now you'll notice that this one is attached to the 38.2. Just like everything else we've mentioned so far today, if you adjust this drawing, the alerts are not going to move with it. You can even remove the drawing first and it will not cancel the alerts. So be mindful of that if you're using drawings to create alerts. That's really the second way in a nutshell. Let's move into the third now. So the third thing we can use to create an alert in Thinkorswim would be to use a study to trigger us to some sort of condition that's being fulfilled. Now that may sound a little bit complicated, but it's really not as bad as it seems. What we're going to do is add the RSI because I think it's just an easy visual to follow along with uh, instead of looking at moving averages crossing. So here we go, we're adding the RSI to our study list. We're gonna expand that so it's a little easier to see here. And what we wanna focus on, let me get a little bit more data here on the screen, is all of these instances where we've taken out the read of 70, which traditionally speaking from an RSI perspective would indicate that, that the stock is overbought, right, in the short term. So we wanna know and we want an alert whenever it reads overbought. So what we're gonna do to set this up is not click on this and click create an alert. It's not like our drawing set that we just saw. Instead, click on your chart, right click that is, come down to the create alert tab as we did earlier in the first example. And instead of using the price to trigger the alert, what we're gonna do is drop the menu down and come into the study filter. Now you may or may not have some things preloaded here. Don't worry about that. Click on the edit function at the very bottom and you should be presented with a new pop-up window. Whatever's up at the top, it could be something, it could be nothing. Make sure you delete it. We wanna start from scratch here. So what we're going to do is click on the add condition button right here and truly start from scratch. Don't worry, you don't have to know anything about coding to make this work. So as I click on that, we get another pop-up window where we can select a condition. I'm gonna drop this down. I'm gonna choose study because we're looking for the RSI. Then I'm just gonna look it up, so RSI. There we go, comes right up, beautiful. And as I click on that, there we go, it populates, that's fantastic. So if the RSI value, which is what this is reading here on the left-hand side, if that crosses above that 70 um, metric here, then we want an alert. So instead of clicking down and choosing study again, we're just gonna go to value and we're gonna manually type in 70, there we go. So I'm gonna click save. And now what you'll notice is that this says if the RSI essentially crosses above 70, we want an alert. So trigger if true, correct. And what you'll get down below in your little preview window is a, in exactly that, a preview of when this alert will come true. So let me zoom in a little bit. And when it's reading flat down at the bottom for a zero, the alert is not true. And that makes sense because we're currently here less than 30. So technically it's the opposite. It's a little bit oversold. We're not triggering an overbought reaction. However, if you look at right here, which is about the midpoint of November, let me move this a little bit. That's gonna coincide with this area right here where we triggered one after another, right? We have a trigger from there, early November, there's your mid-November trigger, and that is one, and that's one right here. So it's just confirming that you set this up the right way, and it's going to work going into the future. So that's how we can create a very simple alert based on a study function. I wish I had all the time in the world to go through every single type of condition here, but click add condition, you can come down through here and you can knock yourself out. Go through value. If the value of something crosses above a certain indicator, you can do that. You can use any study that's included in Thinkorswim. The list is nearly endless here. You can use moving average crossovers. You can set up almost anything with this condition wizard. We just use the RSI because it's a really simple and visual way to see where the alerts are going off, okay? So what we're gonna do is click okay. And now we're back over in this. And what you'll notice is that all of that has gone away. And instead we just have a study filter. And if the study filter that we set up is true, we're gonna get an alert. So I'm going to click create and now nothing will happen to the chart. So you may forget about these types of alerts here, which is why I wanted to mention one more time, the market watch tab is going to be your friend. You're gonna to go to the subcategory alerts and here you go. You can filter by the status. So if you were to click on this, there you go, all of our active alerts are up at the top. The one that we just created 
is this RSI crosses above 70 and currently it's false, so we're not getting an alert. And that is still active. If you wanted to cancel it, once again, you can right click, cancel that alert, and now it's no longer valid. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one underneath and I'm just gonna cancel all, okay? So do something like this or cancel all is also this button up at the top. Do be aware that when you click that, everything on your list will be triggered to be canceled. And you know, if, if you set something up very specifically, you may not know that, right? If you right click as well, you can, or if it's active still, you can replace the alert. Let's just show that once more here as a little bit of an extra tip towards the end of the video. So create alert, we're just gonna say that's fine. And what we'll do is go back to market watch. Here's our active alert up at the top. I'm gonna right click, I'm gonna click on replace alert. And what we'll do is we can just change it, right? So we can instead go to last if it's um, below this time and now it should trigger immediately, right? So what I'll do is click create. Again, keep an eye on what happens up here. Boom, there we go. The alert did trigger, therefore everything's working fine, right? So that's a brief overview of all the different ways you can set up alerts inside of Thinkorswim. Now I did promise a couple of extra tips and tricks. Let's get into that now. So the first thing to talk about for an advanced tip and trick would be if you right click, come into the create alert option. And instead of using notify me on price condition, you can drop this menu down and there's a ton of different options in here that may not you know, be a conventional type of alert. A really cool one is this calendar event. So if someone's gonna pay out a dividend, you can set that up here. So you're alerted whenever that dividend is gonna be paid out. You can set up an earnings announcement and all you would do is type in the symbol, right? So let's go with AAPL for an earnings announcement. Oops, we want PL, not OK. There we go. So Apple Inc., there it is and notify of any such event that fits the criteria below, okay? So for me, it's just this earnings. Of course, it's grayed out because we want everything and we're not gonna be picky there. And then again, now that we've mastered this window, everything here is the exact same, the notifications and the options. So I'll click create, and now that alert is active. If we come on over to the Apple chart, what you'll notice, if this loads anytime soon, is that there is nothing that shows up on the chart. All that is gonna be available for you to know that this alert exists is coming into the Market Watch tab, the alert subcategory, and what you'll notice is any earnings event for Apple at the time of the event, we will have a trigger for an alert. So you can cancel that in this window as well uh, or adjust it from there. So that's the first sort of advanced tip and trick. We're gonna go back on over to the SPY. Let me just show you a couple of other useful ones as well. Create alert. We're gonna to go to notify me on, let's go with rating change, right? So if there's an upgrade out there, uh, let's instead of go with all symbols, let's go for a watch list, right? So this is our watch list over here. We can click on this little gear, come into personal, and that's our core list. So there we go, we've got the core list. If anything there gets a different rating, then guess what? We're gonna get an alert. So we'll click create. And again, you won't visually see anything here, but once again, coming on over to market watch, alerts. What you'll notice, if a company rating changes from the core list, we are going to get an alert. So that's tip number one here. Let's dive into some more advanced stuff that uh, maybe is what you're looking for in terms of options alerts, right? We did briefly mention that. If I right click on the chart, come back to our pop-up window, what we're going to do is change the spread to single. Now notice what happens here. This has auto-populated to a random call, okay? And you can adjust this by coming in and changing all of your metrics here. So if you wanted to look at a different symbol, you would have to change that in symbol, but your expiration, you can choose whatever expiration you want. Oops, there we go. You can change the strike price and you can change from call to put, right? Now also, we mentioned before this best box. Now, now that we have an option spread loaded up, we can click this and you can see here are your different options exchanges. So that is pretty useful if you're only looking for something from the CBOE, uh, what is that, Chicago Board of Exchange, there you go. Now you have your pricing from that level. And you're getting down below a preview of that options chart instead of the SPY underlying in the background. So that's how that works. The other way that you can do the same exact thing would be to come to the trade tab, come to an options chain, right click on an option, click on create alert, and once again, you have the same thing loaded up here. Uh, it just so happened to be that we ironically clicked on the 440 call, and that's the same thing we had in our prior example. Let me cancel that and instead go out in expiration and change to the put side. We're gonna click create alert, 
And there we go. So we do have that expiration that's changed here. We have the 439 and this time it is a put. If we're at or above whatever price, again, all of this stuff will work the same exact way. Now that we understand this alert pop-up window, that's how it all works. If you wanted to change this to a straddle, you can do that, right? And in here, you would now be able to choose the two different uh, contracts that you're essentially looking at. So a ton of versatility here in the alerts pane from Thinkorswim. Again, I think something that's really powerful about the platform are these notifications to your mobile. So definitely take advantage of that if that's something you're interested in. And that's really going to wrap up the video. We covered a lot today. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything new, definitely let me know down below in the comment section or by simply giving the video a thumbs up. Don't forget that all of our regular scheduled content will come out as scheduled. Exactly that. Sunday for the weekly watch list, Wednesday for the midweek market update and the Friday videos for the crypto weekend report. All of that being said, I wish you all a green trading week.